Parkstone International is pleased to present you. Mexican Painting Written by Jean Charlotte Mexican painting did not come to be internationally recognized until the early 20th century. It was the muralist movement, starting in the 1920s and strongly connected to the Mexican Revolution of the previous decade, from which such great artists as Jose Clemente Orozco, David Alfaro Siqueiros, and Diego Rivera emerged. Rarely has art been more political. Thus, what Mexican muralists of the time put up on the walls of the most diverse buildings also tells the story of this ever so restless nation. The murals of today, impregnated by Indian, colonial, and popular tradition, are not a freak flare-up lighted by the bonfire of a revolution. However, a national style was not at all in evidence as the movement began. By 1920 decades of successful official pressure had succeeded in stifling Mexican aesthetics, or at any rate in running them underground into the subconscious. When the time came for the young revolutionaries to re-establish a link to their plastic heritage, they went through pangs of pioneering and blind progress, which have earned the movement its name of renaissance or rebirth. Throughout the 19th century pictures were painted with Mexican subject matter, featuring popular costumes and mores. The costume bristers, artists like Hezequiel Iriarte and Cosimiro Castro, were more adept at the graphic mediums than at painting. They left us an encyclopedic survey of 19th century Mexico in albums of lithographs, some hand-colored, and a few pictures, now housed in the historical museum of Chapultepec. But, prophets in their own country, they remained without honor in their time, their works embedded anonymously in the plentiful and ever-varied folk production. It took the recognized fine arts a long time to contact, unashamed, the Mexican milieu. The critics saw further ahead than the artists, and a leitmotif runs through writings on art in the mid-19th century, a sighing for a national art to match the national independence that had just been realized. When in 1869 Petronilo Monroy exhibited his allegory The Constitution of 57, a flying female in Pompeian drapes, critics admired it but suggested, beautiful as it may be, is it not time that our artists exploit the dormant wealth of our own ways of life, both old and new. Once the revolution of 1910 came about, the paradox of a majority of painters unaware of the national pride that shook their native half became acute. Manuel Gamio complained in 1916, painters copy Murillo, Rubens, Zuloaga, or still worse paint views of France, Spain, Italy, if need be of China, but hardly ever do they paint Mexico. Hardly ever shows that Gamio was aware of exceptions to his statement. The contemporary plastic rediscovery of Mexico had already begun when he spoke those disheartened words.